All right, so this is in response to the going the distance video that we did recently. Uh, Zurich Sanders, this also brings up the problem of explorer ships. If there is nothing to do while exploring unknown space, no one is going to explore and a big portion of the ships will go unused. I feel this is one of the areas where they will have to sacrifice some of the realism of the game in order to allow for interesting gameplay. The free warp idea kind of helps with this, but all in all, they need to not make space so empty. There has to be interesting things to explore at all times in order to allow for the space yacht fantasy to go anywhere beyond eye candy ships. Um, yeah, well, I think that's an interesting topic for an episode. Now, to be honest, if, you know, if we're going to talk about exploration and exploration ships, I think that there's something that um, we need to put on the table right away. I think that if you're looking at these ships through the Star Trek lens, which, you know, is the lens that I fully support. I mean, if someone could, you know, sit there and say, like, you could go out and just explore for months or weeks or whatever, and it's just all that mattered was as long as you had enough, uh, what is it, deuterium and uh, dilithium crystals, you can just keep going. Um, I'd be okay with that. I totally would. But I don't think that Star Citizen is a universe that is entirely built out in the Star Trek way. Of course, you can't travel between star systems without the assistance of whatever, a wormhole, jump gate, whatever it is. Um, so... You know, if you're kind of looking at it through the Star Trek lens, I think that to a certain degree, I think that that's kind of the wrong way to view it. But that being said, I think that there's merit to the idea of just exploring areas where you don't have to, quote unquote, boldly go where someone has laid the infrastructure for you to go before. You know, I think that there's merit to the idea of just kind of going out there and finding things. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, if I was somebody who was literally working on the Star Citizen design team, if I was working at CIG, I mean, of course, I would still be the guy who goes, oh, yeah, you can't build a ship like that. No, you can't. You can't see it. No, it's not good enough. Do it again. Uh, but I, I would want to be the guy who builds like the, the rogue asteroid space station that's been abandoned that someone could find in deep space in a star system and then maybe there's a you know the place has obviously been ransacked but maybe there's a little clue and you go on some kind of you know adventure or you just chase down all these random clues to finally you find the smuggler's cache or something like that and it you know something that obviously would reward you very generously for time spent but i would want to be the person who designs missions in the game like that you know, that's what I would love to do. And so I, I really want to see that gameplay uh, come to life in the Star Citizen universe. I want people to go out and, you know, just wander and explore and find things. I, I would love for there to be a facility uh, within the game for just, you know, developers to just create missions within the context of the universe, within, you know, the kind of immersive envelope not something that's just totally filled with current day references but something really cool that players can just go out and find and stuff like that i think that that would be a really cool way to populate the game and have interesting odds and ends for the players to find i mean certainly even you know i i use it as a touchstone so often in a lot of my videos but even in the early days of wow i'm sure there's a lot of players out there who have either you know played the game or are playing it but who remember in the early days going out and finding just interesting things and going, oh, what's this? What's this ancient temple? What could be down here? Oh, is there going to be something down here? Oh, you know, is there going to be treasure, whatnot? Oh, why can't we get into here and that sort of stuff? I was very much one of those players. And so I would love to see things like that in Star Citizen. And I would love to have, you know, the facilities in place for players to go out and just explore without having to constantly eyeball the fuel gauge, which I think is kind of a major bummer. And I realize that 
you know, as always, whenever I, you know, make a video like this, um, <laughs> and I take on something that they've done, I think that when we, when we found out about travel times, when we found out about the realistic travel times, which was realistic, you know, honestly, it was, it was very early on that we found out about that during, you know, like, you know, was it, uh, ask 10 for the chairman, <laughs> you know, how long ago was that show? Um, <clears throat> when they were asking about that, and about, we started to kind of factor in these ideas of realistic travel times through a star system, which I think a lot of us, I think, absorbed really well. We were kind of enthusiastic about that because, you know, once again, like the instant travel mechanic that so many games have, I think, in a way, it kind of destroys their worlds. If I'm going to be completely honest, uh, I mean, certainly in WoW, I think that that's the truth. It has destroyed the world, but yeah, I think there's, you know, that video would be an hour long video to explain that situation. But I think that the idea of realistic, you know, travel with time factored in through a star system was a great idea. The idea of fuel depots and having to make multiple stops even between planets for even a ship like the 315P, the 300, the Super Hornet, and all of that, I think that that was, in my opinion, going too far. Because I can, I can deal with the idea of, you know, having to, say, make an eight minute trip across the solar system and I bet you there's a lot of gamers who are like yeah you know what actually I'm totally okay with that because uh, when when I do the travel I get up from my desk and I can take care of things around the house real quick and then come back sit down and boom pop out a warp um, unless you're interdicted of course which uh, you know we dealt with as well in that previous episode of going the distance some ideas there but I think that when you add the fuel mechanic, you stop and get fuel and dock and do all these things, that just kind of made it a bummer. It, it really did. Um, I think though that the item system 2.0, a fully implemented one with sub components, I think could be the mechanic that utterly rescues this and solves so many of these problems. Because if you can get in there and I think Maybe it's just me, but I, I think that there's a lot of sci-fi fans who are kind of looking forward to the idea of, in Star Citizen of tinkering with their ships and modifying performance through changing various modules. Now, this is something that we've heard about very vaguely for years that this was going to be a thing. And then when we, you know, we get these comments about subcomponents and we go, ooh, that, that, that could really bring a little bit of interest to the game, or that could really bring a whole lot of depth, sorry, to the game. I think a lot of us are excited about that and I think the idea of kind of tinkering with your ship and getting certain components maybe for your engines that you know reduce your speed while you're traveling by a certain amount but can greatly increase your range that you know lower your fuel consumption but obviously there's going to be a trade-off you can add to column b but you got to take from column a that sort of thing so you just can't make an omni ship that just does everything at a hundred percent but I think if you have a balanced system like that in place and you can allow players to greatly increase their range or their scanning range and things like that, allow them to get in there and tinker with all the various little components of their ship, I think you can find so much depth and so much rewarding and interesting gameplay for players within that, that that can allow you to bypass that kind of bummer of a mechanic and allow players a way to get more involved and more immersed in the universe. I mean, certainly for me, you know, currently right now, um, as I as, as I'm working in the other game, I have now gotten to the point where I've begun to, you know, where I've maxed out and I've begun to uh, sim and get my data points and kind of get okay, this is what I got to go for, this is what I got to go for, and all that. And I find that such rewarding gameplay and so interesting and so intricate that I really love it. And to see a system like that with ships through components and sub components and different ways that you can modify and trick out your ship, I think that that really would be kind of that would be the stake on the plate with Star Citizen. 
at least in my point of view, being able to kind of really go in there and tinker with these ships and do interesting things with them. Maybe not be able to create an Omni ship that does everything so well, but creating a ship that for that specific task or for that specific purpose is just absolutely amazing. I think that that's the kind of rewarding gameplay that I would, I think through the component subcomponent system that could not only kind of rescue and restore the idea behind exploration and these sort of, uh, you know, as he was describing them, the eye candy ships. Um, yeah, if you, if you really get into a system like that where you've got subcomponents and you're really allowing players a lot of freedom, a lot of leeway and how they can modify their ship, including things like fuel consumption, I think that you could you could really do some interesting things and you could go beyond just sort of like the eye candy ship and you could really fit out a ship to do what you want it to do. Certainly in and around exploration, you can give a lot of these ships, even the smaller ones like the Origin 3, what is it, the 315P, you can give those some real legs and some real ability to kind of go out there and explore on their own and let players just go out and find things, which I think would be absolutely some of the best gameplay that this game could offer for, let's say, the less combat oriented amongst us. And I think that would make for some amazing videos and I would love to see that content. And certainly I would love to see systems in the game that foster and facilitate that. So I think that hopefully if they use it right, item system 2.0 could rescue it. But once again, component, subcomponents, this is something that remains to be seen. Anyways, that's the show for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.